Welcome to our lecture line. Now we're going to use the triple integral to find the location of the center of mass. Now we have the same cylinder that we used in the previous video. We had a variable density. The density increased as we went up in height. And we found that the mass of the cylinder was equal to k pi a squared h squared over 2. Now the equation we need to find the location of the center of mass in the z direction, the distance from the xy plane to the center mass in the y direction right here. So we're looking for this distance. And this distance here is, we'll name it cm sub z, the center mass in the z direction. And we can find that by multiplying small little dm, small little mass elements. And of course, if we know that the mass is going to be equal to the mass is going to be equal to the density times the volume, so a small mass element, dm, is going to be the density times a small volume element like that. So we're going to multiply that dm times the distance to that particular location. So it would be actually the distance of the center mass of each little volume element or each little mass element, which is simply the location of that mass element. So we call that z with a little line on top, just to indicate that simply the distance from the xy plane to each mass element. When we integrate over all those mass elements all the way throughout the entire cylinder, and we divide it by the total mass of the cylinder, we get the location of the center mass, and that's what we're trying to find. So this becomes, what we're going to do is we're simply going to find the numerator, and yes, we are going to use a triple integral. Therefore, the triple integral will look as follows. We have a triple integral of the distance to each element, we'll call it z like this, and uh, we'll leave that off for now, times dm. And so we're going to integrate in cylindrical coordinates over the radius, over the angle going all the way around the cylinder, and over the height z. And that is going to be equal to the triple integral, we'll put the limits in just a moment, z times dm, and dm is going to be the density, and the density is k times z, k times z, that's the density, times the volume element dv, which is r dr d theta dz. So this is my volume element dv, there's my density k times z, and there's the distance from the xy plane to each mass element. So now we're ready with our integral. Well, we still need the limits of integration. R is going to be integrated from 0 to A, that's the radius. Theta is going to be integrated from 0 to 2 pi. We're going to go all the way around the cylinder, all the way around the circle. And Z is going to be integrated from 0 to the height H. So now we also have our limits of integration. Let's start by integrating R dr. We can pull K out of the integral. So this is equal to K times the double integral, and we still have, let's see, theta and z left to integrate, r is going to be r squared over 2, evaluated from r equals 0 to a, we still have a z squared d theta dz left to integrate. Okay, when we plug in the limits of integration, we plug in 0, we get nothing, plugging a, we get a squared divided by 2, we can pull that out, so this is equal to k a squared divided by 2 times the double integral over theta and z of d theta z squared dz, because I'm going to do theta next. Theta is going to be integrated from 0 to 2 pi, and so that becomes equal to, we have a k a squared divided by 2 in the front, times the single integral over z that we have remaining, d theta becomes theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, and we still have a z squared dz left to integrate. Again, when plugging the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi. The 2 and the 2 here cancels out, so we end up with k a squared, a single pi, times the integral from z equals 0 to z equals h, the height, of z squared dz. Now we can integrate that, and that becomes the following. This is equal to k a squared pi times z cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to h. 
So now when we plug in the lower limit again, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get h cubed over 3. So this becomes equal to k pi a squared h cubed over 3. So now we have the evaluation of the numerator of that fraction that will give us the center mass, the location of center mass. So it is equal to this quantity right here. So now when we take the quotient, we can say that the location of the center mass in the z direction is equal to that triple integral of z dm over the mass of the cylinder, which we got in the previous video. So this is the numerator. We have k pi a squared h cubed over 3. We divided by the mass, which we have over here, which we found in the previous video, k pi a squared h squared divided by 2. Notice that the k's cancel out, the pi's cancel out, the a squared cancels out, and an h cubed divided by h squared is simply h. Divided by 2 in the denominator, that goes into the numerator here, and divided by 3 in the denominator. And notice that the center of mass of a cylinder that has a variable density that increases as k times z as you gain height, that will be equal to 2 thirds h, so 2 thirds the way from the bottom to the top, that's where you'll find the center mass of that particular cylinder. And that's how it's done using the triple integral.